rock hard kicks, the rock and roll guitar jam. Well, hey there guys, this is Rock Hard Riffs, the rock and roll guitar channel for the self-taught. In today's video, we're going to use melody to help us develop soloing skills. Now, if you happen to be new to our channel, please take a look in our playlists. There's stuff for all different levels of players out there, stuff for the very beginner and on up. There are different songs to learn how to play, and on and on. There's all kinds of stuff in there. Just take a look, and if you like what we do, if it looks good to you, please subscribe. We would really appreciate that. So today we're going to use the song Ode to Birdland, which I'm going to put in the top comment if you want to hear the song in its entirety. Then check out the link in the top comment, and that is the link to our song Ode to Birdland, which is like my take on a jazz classic called Lullaby of Birdland, which is the melody that I follow in Ode to Birdland. So it's a really cool melody, it's a really cool song. You know, I love jazz and I love rock, I love all kinds of music. Just as long as it's good, personally, that's all I care. So, just to give you a quick hint of how it sounds, uh, it goes something like this. That's part of it. There are three parts. The second part goes like this. And the third part. Like that, like a uh, like a big band jazz kind of sound to it. So let's take some of the hair off of this. I'm going to put a little back on. As I'm using my Strymon Sunset, we're on the Texas OD mode right now. So we're going to start here at the E, and that's on your G string at the ninth fret. So five, seven, nine, right? And we're going to do a lot of sliding back and forth. Okay. So again, we're at the ninth fret of your G string. We're going to slide up to the 11th fret and then back down to 9th. Okay, then we're going to use the index finger in there as well. We're basically using the little BB box, if you want to call it that, the little bass here of the 5th, 4th, and 3rd strings. Okay, so we go from here, then to the 7th fret, then the 9th fret on the D string, then the 8th fret, which I use my middle finger. We have that little flat there. So again, then the ring, the ring finger or third finger back on the seventh, ninth fret up to the eleventh, back down to ninth. So okay, one more time. to the 5th string, 7th fret, 9th fret, and then 10th fret, okay, so, now back up to the 3rd string, now repeat, We're going to go with our index finger on the 5th string at the 7th fret. Then your ring finger on the ninth fret of the 4th string. We're going to strike it. The, mid, the uh, index finger is basically barring at the 7th fret. So when I pull this off, it's right there. Okay, so... Then down to the 5th fret. 3rd fret, 2nd fret, so, so let's take it from the top, Switch. 
one more time, then we'll move on to the next section. Okay. Also, once you get this, you really need to work on your timing. Be on the back of the back beat, especially like parts like this. <laughs> Okay, so one more time here. Back to G string. Okay, so we've got that. So right after that, we're going to go into this little other part. Uh, he's singing about a willow tree. Okay, so we're at the 11th fret on the G string, 11, 12, and 14. the D string at the 11th fret. Then again, so we're at the 11th, 12th, and 14th. finger we're at the fifth string at the 14th fret then at the uh, 13th then the 11th so all of these they go from 11 12 14 11 12 14 then this one is 14 13 11 Again, but let's go over the whole thing one more time. section and this is like this big band sounding kind of thing now this is one here's a really good reason why to learn to play as many different styles and different stuff different bands etc as you can because you never know when you're going to use something that you might have learned before now this next section that goes I'm thinking when I got to this part when I'm writing the song I'm thinking I want something a little funky a little big bandish but not too funky, and I was thinking Led Zeppelin crunch, you know. Okay, I'm thinking something kind of like that. So I came up with, and I'm doing a little pucka pucka there. I'm hitting the strings while muting them. 
So I'm forming an E here at the uh, at the uh, seventh and ninth fret. So my ring and pinky are on the third and second strings. My index finger, my pointer finger, is on the E string, the high E, at the seventh fret. That's an E. Right? So here we go. Okay, so that E, E flat, E, and we're going to slide with it. Then we go into this chord, which I believe is an E suspended ninth. Make sure you get that high E string in there. That's just like the crunch, same thing, okay? So again. Then we go just from E flat to E. So here goes the difference. It's E to E flat to E, then the other is E flat to E. to do kind of like a double stop. That's the G and the B string at the ninth fret. All it is is part of the E chord, right? So then to the D or another double, double stop at the seventh fret of the G and B string. Now we're going to slide down a fret or two there and we're going to be on the fifth fret of the B string or your second string the 6th fret of the G string. So we went... Right. Now to the D string at the ninth fret. following the melody of the song. I rearrange it a little bit here and there. I add a little something, take away a little something here and there. So a big part of the song, the vocal or the singer is going on a riff. They're like doing a solo with their voice. Do do da da dee dee do do da. It's called scat singing back in the day. And it's basically doing a solo with your voice, which is pretty cool. And they also play back and forth with the other instruments, right? So, all right. Let's take it from the very beginning. So again, what we're learning is taking melody, playing it like single string kind of thing, with different strings. We're not playing chords, we're just playing melody. And then you can kind of riff on the melody, right? So make up your own stuff. So here we go, let's go from the very top.
big band part. And on these two, make sure, man, you are on the back of the backbeat. Just like almost till it's almost too late. Right? Not quite, but almost too late. much in a nutshell. Let us know if you have any questions about this. Again, this is definitely not for beginners, uh, but uh, anybody that's intermediate and up, of course, play with this. Mess around with it. You don't have to learn it all at one time. Just learn a certain, just work on a certain section, then work on another section, etc. But this should uh, help you with soloing, right? Following melody and then kind of riffing on it. We're just working on melody on this. Alright guys, thanks so much for joining us. We really do appreciate it. Make sure you subscribe if you haven't already, and we'll see you next video.